All right, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday. It's going to be a great day today. You are going to experience the Lord's presence in power today. Good morning, good morning, everyone that's joining us today. It is Friday. I don't even have to tell you what to do today. You know what to do, Tony. It's Friday. Give me five, somebody. Come on, it is day five of our prayer week. That's right, Melissa. Day five. Give me five. Because you're going to finish the week strong. You're going to win the day. You're going to win today. You're going to win the week. You're going to win the weekend. And you're going to head into next week with all kinds. That's right, Megan. It is day five of your prayer week. You're going to win the day. Dan, good morning. James, good morning. Everyone, my wife's giving me five. That's right. It is time to win the day. And you win the day, you win the week. You win the week, you win the weekend. That's right, Rick, Rick Ogden. I will see you a little later, my brother. There's my wife's five. Come on. All right. Great to see everyone this morning. It's been a fantastic week. It's been a great week of talking about the power of the Lord, the victory of the Lord, talking about the battle is the Lord's, um, and we're going to continue that today. Today is officially Expect Jesus to Show Up Friday. Good morning, Frankie. Expect Jesus to Show Up Friday. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been ghosted? You don't know what that means. Have you ever been stood up? Has someone ever promised to be there for you, and then they then they just it's a, they're a no show? Maybe you needed help moving. Oh yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there at nine in the morning to help you move. No show. Uh, maybe you invited them to a birthday party. Maybe you invited them to a graduation celebration. Yeah, I'll be there. No show. Uh, maybe you needed something fixed. Your dishwasher broke. Your your lighting went out. Something happened. And you and yeah, I'll be there. And then and then it's a no show. Uh, that's the biggest bummer in the world. It's frustrating. We have volunteers at church every weekend. They say they'll be here. We're counting on them. And then they don't show up. They don't tell us. We don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden, we have to scramble to, to try to fill, to fill spots. And, and it's frustrating because we feel like when that happens, when people ghost us, that, that we're not very important to them. Like something more fun or something more important came up, and they did that instead of following through with their word, and helping us or being with us. But don't you love people who, who faithfully follow through with their commitment? Don't you love those people? Man, I mean, they say they're going to be there, and they're going to be there. They, they, they say they're coming, and they show up. Don't you love people who are faithful to their word? Here's what I want you to know this morning. God always shows up when we need him. God always shows up. When he says he will. We don't have to worry about that. We can trust him. Daniel chapter 3. You know the story. Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three Jewish youths living in Babylon during the Babylonian captivity. King Nebuchadnezzar builds this huge golden idol. It's an image of himself, a statue of himself. And he gets tricked into, into making a law that says everyone, whenever the music begins to play, they have to bow down to the idol. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, we won't do it. It's against our religion. We serve one God, not many gods. We don't serve the gods of men. They didn't bow down. And so Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. You know the story. Let me read it to you this morning in Daniel chapter 3, beginning in verse 19. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind them, throw them into the blazing furnace. He tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men into the fire. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, look, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace, and he shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So they came out of the fire. But the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed, and their clothing wasn't scorched. It didn't even smell like smoke. 
They threw him into the fire. Their, their most testing, difficult time of their life. And guess who showed up? Jesus. Jesus, the fourth man in the fire. Man, when, when you need God to show up, he shows up. He is the fourth person in the fire. Where does God need to show up for you today? This is expect Jesus to show up Friday. Jesus is true to his word. Jesus is faithful to you. Maybe you need him to show up at your chemotherapy treatment today. Maybe you need Jesus to show up at your child's surgery today. Maybe you need Jesus to show up in that difficult conversation you're going to have with someone. Maybe, you're, maybe you have a performance of some kind or a, a presentation of some kind that, that you're responsible for. And you're asking, you're praying for the Lord to show up. You're praying for the Lord to strengthen you. You're praying for, for God to come and help you with that. Maybe, maybe someone's going to need guidance today that you come across. Maybe someone's going to need encouragement today and you need God to show up. Maybe, maybe someone's going to need healing today. And you're going to pray for them, and you're going, to, you're going to want God to show up. Amen? See, we go through all of our, day, our days, and there's times we need Jesus to show up. We need Jesus to be the fourth man in the fire. What is that for you today? You may not even know. You may not know until you get there today. And all of a sudden you go, wait a second, I need Jesus to show up. Let me encourage you this morning in the Scriptures. In Matthew chapter 28, as Jesus sends the disciples out to preach the gospel, here's what he says. I've been given all, in verse 18, I've been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. Be sure of this. I'm with you always, even to the end. Be sure of this. As you go out, I'm with you. As you preach the gospel, I'm going to show up. As you share your faith with that person, I'm going to be there. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Hebrews chapter 5, yeah, chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you, says the Lord. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will have no fear. What can people do to me? I, I have no fear today. Why? He's with me. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 2 and 3. When you go through the flood, when you go through deep waters, God says, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not be thrown down. You will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And then skipping back to Isaiah 41, verse, verses 10 through 13. Listen to this, friends, this morning. This is expect Jesus to show up Friday. Isaiah 41, verses 10 to 13. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Come on. Come on, somebody. That's worth it right there, isn't it? Let me read that again. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged. I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. See, all your enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who tried to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. For I hold you by your right hand. I, the Lord, I, I, the Lord your God, and I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Come on, somebody. That is good news. This is expect Jesus to show up Friday. You're going to go out today, and suddenly you're going to encounter something, and you need God to show up. You're going to come under duress. You're going to come under attack. You're going to need the Lord to, to show up and do something. And God says, I'm with you. Don't be afraid. I'm holding you by the right hand. I'm holding you up today. Don't be afraid of the work of the enemy. Jesus is going to show up in the fire, and Jesus is going to show up in the flood. Jesus is going to show up in the performance. Jesus is going to show up in the presentation. Jesus is going to show up in the conversation. Jesus is going to show up in the surgery. Jesus is going to show up in the medical treatment. Jesus is going to show up when you need to counsel your kids. Jesus is going to show up when someone at work asks you about your faith and you don't know what to say. Jesus, this is expect Jesus to show up Friday. He's the fourth man in the fire. Come on, somebody. He is with you today. You don't need to worry about that. Jesus said, go and preach the gospel. Go and make disciples. Don't be afraid. Lo, I am with you always, 
even to the end of the age. When you open your mouth to share the gospel, I'm with you. When you, when you, when you go out and, and, you, and you, you need the Lord to show up, He's with you. Come on, somebody. Let's pray this morning. Let's be thankful this morning that whatever we face, the Lord keeps us in the fire, He keeps us in the flood, and He's with us. Lord, we thank you this morning for your presence with us. David said, even though I go through the, 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 shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you're with me. Jesus said, don't be afraid when you preach the gospel. Don't be afraid when you're talking to people about me. I'm going to give you the words to say. I'm going to be with you always. Isaiah said, don't be afraid in the fire. Don't be afraid, afraid in the flood. I'm going to hold you by the right hand. I'm going to hold you up. Come on. Lord, thank you, Lord, that, that the book of Hebrews says you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. God, as we go through surgery, as our child goes through surgery, you're with us. Lord, as we walk through difficult health issues, you're with us. As we have difficult conversations today, you're with us. As we come across people that need healing today, we need the Holy Spirit to show up and restore their life. You are there, God. We thank you this morning. We expect Jesus, Lord. We expect you, Lord Jesus, to show up because you promised it. You're not going to ghost us. You're going to Holy Ghost us. I just made that up. Thank you, Lord, this morning that you never leave us and forsake us. We thank you this morning, Lord, that your presence abides with us and that you are going to empower us for the purpose you have for us today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, come on, everybody said, it is a great Friday. Finish the day strong, friends. Come on, give me five today. Win Friday, win the week, win the weekend. Get to church this weekend. Worship God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's going to be a great day today. God bless you. We'll see you Monday morning. Have a great day.